Hello everybody and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna tie an emergent ephemeral Danica pattern, also known as a Mayfly. Um, this is probably one of my favorite emergent patterns for these big flies. And I've caught a lot of great fish and my greatest so far is also my personal best so far on the dry fly in 56 centimeters. And uh, I'm gonna show you how to tie them. So start off the hook. It's a partridge clink hammer, size 12. And for thread, I'm just gonna use um Normal uni thread, size 8 and rusty done. Tie the thread in, down the hook shank. Off with the thread. First, I'm gonna find a piece of moose hair that we're gonna use as a rib to strengthen the uh, back body of the fly. Tie it down the hook shank and just a couple of uh, millimeters before we we uh, hit the, the spot where we're gonna start the abdomen uh, we're gonna tie in a piece of ostrich hurl and natural color a bit dirty actually just tie it in pull the tag end so we're gonna have a Long piece of hurl to use as the body. I'm gonna tie down to where the bend of the hook is very critical. So, and up with the thread. So, then we're gonna use or take the ostrich hurl and when you're turning this around the hook, you don't have to um, to uh, do it tightly. It's okay if there's some space in between. This is gonna hang under the surface of the water, so it's gonna look like uh, the empty shell of the back body or abdomen of the the mayfly. And the back body, when it's trying to climb out of the uh, abdomen. Uh, it's gonna look very transparent and this ostrich hill when it comes into water then all these small fibers this, that has a lot of gaps it's gonna come a lot of sunlight uh, through there and it's gonna look translucent so I'm gonna tie that up until we have approximately half centimeter up to the hook eye I'm gonna tie that in Just a couple of turns, cut that off, and then we're gonna take the moose hair, it's from the moose mane, so it's quite long and it's very strong, and we're gonna turn it around the hook, create a bit of spacing, so to say, it's also gonna strengthen the hurl of the back body. It's very important that the back body of um, a merger fly is in the floating. Otherwise, it's just gonna hang on the top of the surface, and we, we don't want that. We want it hanging right down under. So, I'll tie the hair down. It turns. Now a lot of the fi small fibers have been trapped, so we're gonna just gonna take our dubbing brush and brush some of the fibers out, just gently. You don't have to use a lot of force. So there you see, that looks good again. So the next step, we're gonna tie in some tail fibers. 
This is gonna look like when when the fly takes out its back body and the tail starts coming out and the tail fibers are gonna stand out. They, they are also gonna hang on top of the surface and make sure that the, the fly sits nicely on the top of the water and they're gonna put a print on the top of the surface as well. And the tail fibers just have to be a bit longer than the hook. Tie them down on top. So make sure there's a little spread to it. The reason why I use five instead of three is because this fly catches a lot of fish. And uh those trouts have some nasty teeth. So you might lose a tail or two. So Tie that down and the leftover moussara is quite long and we're gonna use that later as a rib for another bright fly. So there we go. And the next gonna take a bright fly hill in the color golden badger. It's quite dark in the, in the middle. It's gonna imitate the, the small uh, quite small and strong legs that, that the Ephemera Danica has. So there's a little more fiber on the other side. So this this feather bends this way, has a curve to it. So on the other side, upside, I've taken off a couple of more fibers than the other side. And that way the haggle is gonna look really really good. It's gonna sit very good right away on top of the the front body or the hatching body of the fly. Tie that in. So I'm gonna take some CDC dubbing and a dark grey and and olive. And I'm gonna mix that together. It's gonna be like 40% olive and 60% uh, of the dark grey. And mix that together. So, just turn it around in your fingertips. There we go. So the front body is used with CDC. There's very highly uh, flotating potential, so it's gonna sit on the top of the surface. It's very important that the CDC is quite loose around. The thread. If it's too tight, then you have squeezed a lot of air out, and we all know that air makes things float on water. So, of course, there has to be potential for a lot of air trapped inside of the body. It's gonna help the fly float a lot more. So, there we go. So, then we're gonna take our, our haggle, turn it around, and because I left some fibers or took some more fibers off on the others on the underside, the part that's gonna be the underside of the feather when I turn it around, you can see it's already lay spreading out very very nicely so if you have to make like a cat skill fly that's the way to do it so I'm gonna do five turns there catches either on the on the side of the hook eye or on the side I don't want the haggle to be tied down on the top of the eye because we're gonna put a wing on it right now, so it needs to have some space. Just use some 
extra couple of wraps. And for the wing, I call this a wing, but it's actually just an indicator from myself because these haggle fibers can be a bit tricky to see on the water surface if you're casting a bit far. So I use coastal deer. It's, uh, it's a bit bright, so the sunlight catches really nicely into it, so I can easily spot it. It's not too thin, it's not too thick, it still has some, a bit of air in it, so it has a bit of floating abilities, but it doesn't matter because we're only gonna put in as many fibers as we can count. As I said, the sunlight will catch this wing quite nicely and will be easy to see it. So, and the length of the, the wing has to be just out to the middle of the tail. So put this on top. And what's very important now, because I don't want my wing to spread out as deer hair can do when you tie it in. So what I do, I do a kind of a normal pinch and loop, but instead of going down under the hook eye, I'm going around the deer hair one more time. So the deer hair is trapped in the, in the thread. And then I just slightly pull it down. And this makes sure that the wing sits on top and the fibers is not spread out like you would see on a pattern like a streaking caddis. So when I tie I just take a couple of turns uh, up and uh, forward and just catch in between some of the fibers, hair fibers, the tag ends. So, and in front, the thread, a couple of turns. To a bit finish. And just an extra one. So, pinch it a little, a little, pinch it a little with my fingernails. So, and now the fly is almost done. Just cut off the tag ends of the deer hair. You can give it a small hit if you want to. No worries, but it should not be a big hit. step before the fly is done is to cut the haggle fibers un underneath of the thorax. So that's gonna then the fly is gonna or the body is gonna lay flat on top of the surface with the fibers sticking out like legs and leave a nice print on the top. So, this is a very easy fly to tie, it's extremely good, and uh, I hope you guys like the video, and will try this out for yourself. So, hope I see you guys in the next video, have a nice evening, goodbye.